Hello everybody, my name is Hafri Shah from Paultime.org. We've already covered the why in the previous video, now we're going to talk about the what and the how of child safety seats. What kind of seats do you need for your child and how do you install them properly? This is a message of safety driven by Proton. When it comes to choosing the right child seat, most parents will ask what's the best brand and model that they can buy. Well, to us, brands don't really matter that much. What's more important is finding the right seat that can fit your child as well as your car. To start with, there are three factors to think of. Your child's height, weight, and then there's the car. Does it have isofix points or just seat belts? It's only then do you come to the seat itself. It's crucial that you get a seat with ECE R44 certification and the seat needs to be compatible with your child's height and weight too. As for your car, if it has isofix anchors like all new Proton models, you might want to consider isofix seats. Now, choosing between child seats that use seat belt or isofix installation is not really a matter of safety. Some people do believe that isofix seats are safer than those that use seat belts, but that's not entirely true. A seat belt seat, if installed properly, can be just as safe as isofix seats. The biggest difference is the installation process, where seat belt seats are significantly more complicated to secure with a higher margin of error. Isofix seats, on the other hand, are much easier to install, with less risk of getting it wrong. The problem is, isofix seats are generally more expensive to buy, but if the budget permits, it's still the recommended option. The next issue is choosing between a front-facing or a rear-facing seat. Ideally, you should keep your child facing the rear for as long as possible. It's only when your child has reached the weight limit of your seat should you then move on to a front-facing seat. So why is rear-facing seat the better option? Well, the most common car crashes is a frontal impact, and in such situations, the child is always pushed backwards into the child seat, spreading the forces evenly across the whole back. Whereas with a front-facing seat, just the head will move forward, putting extra load on the neck area. So, for small kids especially, rear-facing seat is always the safer choice. As for installation, the methods can vary significantly depending on the brand and model of the seat, so it's best to follow instruction manuals very, very closely. There are a few universal tips to make things easier. First of all, install the seats in an open, brightly lit area, so you can clearly see where everything is. You can also push the front seats forward to have more space to maneuver. Using seat belts, it's crucial to pull the belt as tightly as you can to get it really secure. While with isofix seats, check that all the markers are green, indicating that all the connections are properly fitted. Lastly, don't forget to tighten the safety harness to keep your child secure in the seat. The adoption rate of child safety seats in Malaysia is still alarmingly low, and the most common excuse we've heard is that child seats are too expensive to buy. Is that true? Well, if you only look at the name brands, then yes, they can be quite costly. But no one's forcing you to buy those name brands. A cheaper seat will do just fine as long as they have proper ECE R44 certification. We've even found proper certified seats going for under 400 ringgit here in Malaysia. And that's less than what you spend on a set of new wheels or body kit for your new car. If you can afford those optional items, you can afford a child seat. No excuses there. That's it for part 2 in our video series on child safety seats. Do stay tuned to Paltan.org for more on this topic. This has been a message on safety driven by Proton. Thank you for watching.